Alright guys, Tetsuka here, back again today, and yesterday, finally, we actually got an announcement regarding the CDL. Hopefully by the time this video goes live we won't have another one. I don't know whether London, who have announced the first announcement of this uh, roster change, roster mania madness period that we've had over the last month or so, I don't know whether they're going to be doing another announcement today, or whether another team will jump on the bandwagon. Hopefully not, because otherwise I'll be a bit behind the times, but today that's what we're going to talk about, so I'd like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new, as always, I would greatly appreciate it. You know, just a couple of days ago, I was talking about how we were on the verge of 14,000 subscribers. Now we're at 14,500. So, um, you know, it's honestly madness. So thank you very much as always, but that is a given. So just to mention real quick, some people were asking, I did mention it briefly yesterday, but people were asking when this roster change period is going to come to a close. Honestly, I really have no idea. My assumption, as I said yesterday, if you guys missed it, would be that, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start to have announcements related to uh, the league. As it turns out, that very next day, we got an announcement. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll get a couple of more announcements. Over the two weeks after that we'll probably get a couple more because I know that people are starting to be locked into teams now. And then probably within the next month after that things will start to solidify when the new game drops on October 25th. Now we do know that the CDL isn't going to start until 2020 which means we're going to have a really dry rest of the year. And I don't know whether that means necessarily that we're going to have new team announcements, whether new organisations are coming into the league. There's rumoured to be maybe up to 16 teams. Right now we only have 12 announcements even though the rumours about that have kind of died down so maybe they're going to stick at 12 for the first season you know players are going all over the place hopefully but you know as I say because the league starts in January or you know probably start 2020 January February hopefully January like otherwise we've got a really long dry spell but uh, regardless if that is the case there's no real incentive for teams to announce particularly early right even though you want to get your branding out there and get things sorted so really there's it's very difficult to put a time limit on when we're going to start seeing actual announcements but hopefully over the next couple of weeks we'll have a few more things to talk about in addition to what we're talking about today so just briefly in the background here um, Davis Hitch ride says just copy paste the skill based matchmaking for the beta and put it in league like as well I was playing crackheads for three days straight this pretty much resonated with me I don't know if you guys had a similar experience moving onwards though Tezvex uh, tweeted a couple of clips at me so DM them to me on Twitter which I thought you guys would find interesting from rallied stream talking about Illy and talking about Blaz so I thought you guys would find it interesting pretty much implying that Illy is on a team rumored to be Dallas and Blaz is not as of yet who are some of the players that you think should for sure be in the league I think Blastful should be in the league period I think, I think the fact that Blastle's not on the team yet is mind-blowing because that kid's talented. Illy's in the league, dude. Come on, it's Illy. At least I think he... I'm pretty sure he's going to be in the league. I if, think it, if, if the team didn't pick up Illy, they would literally be high. But that, that kid is a fucking goat. So yeah, thanks very much for those for DMing me those clips. If you want to do so, my Twitter is linked down below if you guys want to send me anything or anything you find. If someone follows somebody new, it could be a bit of intel. Feel free to DM me it and, uh, you know, we can speculate together. So moving on with it, Mayhem says the following. Wow, things are looking slow, implying... Um, it's not looking good for his chances. I think he did a couple of follow-up tweets related to this for, of course, he came top four at Champs, right? And uh, didn't seem to have too much effect on his success. Vandy, pretty interesting. I thought this was kind of a, a funny picture. So if you guys aren't um, sure exactly what this uh, is showing, so pretty much this is a, um, a fake boardroom for the CDL and players are just looking at Lion Man's top 10 rated cards. And this is what a couple of players are, are alluding to, that a lot of these uh, management are kind of looking towards the ratings and people's cards like say the likes of Pristini for example not really taken into account uh, chemistry and what the players want because typically in the past the players basically decide what happens with the team this season it's really something rather different so I thought that was kind of funny and uh, I don't know whether this will um, I, I think to some degree looking at stats and looking at things like this is probably affecting some organizations decisions not the most intelligent ones but um, you know maybe that is partially the case Marty says the following related to Spice and Cod Toronto I know Reddit are dying to know and I could tell you We've been we've inked quite a few contracts for Cod Toronto this week, so quite a few contracts. Rumored one of them to have been Kleenex because he's been tweeting about uh, contract stuff. So rumored to him potentially going over Toronto, which is kind of a splice kind of pickup, kind of a young guy like that, not too proven from the European region, kind of a thing they like to do. So I would keep that on your radar. Dylan Madcat Daily says the following: an unrestricted free agent for the 2020 CDL season. If any CDL teams are interested or have any questions, email my agent and he. Ride says the following, there's a Black Ops 2 LAN coming up September 28th to the 29th and uh, this is one of the teams, Karma, Crim6, Aix and Clayster. so uh, bring it all the way back, um, what a team that could be. 
Now, um, you know, someone replies, how did Parasite not get invited? I would have, but Damon sketched on me, Killer and Miracle, so they would have had the, they would have had the God tier OG uh, Freak or Impact Squad didn't end up happening. Teep couldn't play and it was the only way to get Cole and Impact. Cole with Damon and Impact with Bose, uh, which, you know, in, in fact, Damon did sketch. So it kind of makes sense because they had different rosters back in the Black Ops two days. So I guess that's a decision they went with. And, um, you know, Parasite wasn't exactly in the best of mood following up on this on Twitter. Well, see, since you wanted to get disrespectful with me, I'm good. I'll be at home sitting there watching one of Parasite's most famous quotes from back in the Black Ops two days, of course, when he was on the Epsilon team. And um, this is what he what he said yesterday. Just thought this is a pretty sad situation really for Parasite. Hate when I only get looked at as a main, so as a main assault rifle. I've flexed multiple times in my career and found success. It's always about the time I put in. I was winning season awards and getting third multiple times in the champs, running SMGs and Advanced Warfare, Ghost Model Warfare 3, even won an event in Black Ops 2 with an SMG role. So doesn't look like pa um, Patty P, what am I saying Patty P for? Pa Parasite is going to get in the spot on the team. I was thinking Patty P because uh, this next tweet is from him. Um, someone tweets who's your team and Hitch has informed me that it's classified not sure if uh, there was a tweet that went out from Arzatiz yesterday saying his team was going to be Gunless, Envoy and um, Pristini and people were maybe relating that to franchising I think he was that was really related to this Black Ops 2 throwback tournament I believe but even then thinking about that if Arzatiz is saying his team is Gunless, Envoy and Pristini for his throwback tournament and the rumoured um, what is it Chicago roster is Scump Formal, Arzatiz, Gunless and Envoy then maybe there really is something going on there but anyway moving on from the speculation this is the actual announcement we got yesterday welcome Bradley Waskin Marshall to our first as our first London COD player pending league, league approval interesting that these things even have to happen right in the past it's just like you want to come on our team feel free sunshine um, but yeah Waskins is one of the best assault rifle players on the scene a couple of people were looking at this and saying like um, well first of all not really on the scene like in the scene right doesn't that make more sense anyway people were saying like oh you know come on he's not one of the best assault rifle players like what do you expect London to do as their announcement Waskin is a very mid-tier assault rifle player we wish we could have got someone better you know like, obviously they're not going to do that so uh, we hope Bradley's hard working hard working and individual skill will help put the team on the place where we expect to be more tomorrow so this is where when I said more tomorrow um, there might be another announcement hopefully it doesn't come out too early I might make this video a bit earlier live a little bit earlier just in case there is an announcement that comes later on so I don't feel like I'm behind the times something may have been announced by the time you're watching this video if that is the case I will do my best to cover it tomorrow um, so yeah very interesting stuff. And I thought I would touch on really quick what we think the rest of this team is going to be. Waskin did a tweet a while ago that said, I'm not teaming with my brother. Um, we can even try and find it real quick. Let's just go to my profile. And he replied to he replied to one of my tweets from a little bit ago. My computer's going slow because we are recording. But anyway, so he did this tweet a while ago in reply to this individual saying, I hate to be the one to say it, but I will not be teaming with my bro for year one due to circumstances I can't talk about. He has a killer squad and I'll be rooting for him no matter. To what so that's the tweet he did a few days ago and honestly Waskin is the type of guy to be very down to earth about this stuff we know that Scraps is basing left right and said to be done what to believe about of, of what he's saying but I honestly think Waskin is a guy that he isn't really going to bait about this stuff so genuinely maybe I'm getting fooled but I personally think if Waskin's saying he's not teaming with his brother then I don't think he is I think Scraps is more of the type of individual and the type of um personality to want to stay in the states same with Trey Zero as well like he's probably Probably my prediction is that Scraps and Zero will stay in the States playing with American players and Waskin will be playing on the London team and I imagine this London squad is going to try and be all British. I think that's really the vibe they're going for. Their entire coaching staff is from the UK. So I'm thinking, okay, who is going to be the rest of the players on this team? Waskin is on the squad. Now, let's just brainstorm it really quick. I have an idea of where I think they might go, but I might be wrong. So I think they're going to go Waskin, they're going to get Dylan on the team. If you're not getting Scraps and Zero, and then maybe they'll get Zero, but I doubt it. Maybe they'll get Scraps. Um, I doubt it personally. I may be wrong about that. I think they'll get Dylan Cod on the team. And then as Waskin and Dylan, I think they're going to bring Alex on as well from that reciprocity core. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that if you're not getting Scraps and Zero, you need like a really talented kid like Dylan and Alex. And that could be a filthy SMG duo. 
Then you've got to fill out the rest of the team. And I'd be interested to see the direction they go with this one. Rated has said he's been signed. And my thinking is, where would Rated have been signed apart from London that actually, like, you know, had him high up on their priority list? Of course, Rated's from Wales, so British. So my thinking is Rated could be on this squad. Now, there's other guys like Tommy, like Mad Cat, that maybe Swizz as general manager might be trying to get in that has relationships with in the past. Maybe they'll try and fill out the team with Bantz or something like that. And I'm sure some of these guys might be considered for the substitutes but it's going to be really interesting to see how this team develops my thinking right now is that it's going to be Wiskin, Dylan, Alex, Rated plus one and it might be Zed so it might be like four fifths of the reciprocity team I don't know I'm also thinking is with Joe as head coach him and Rated go back so far that I feel like Come on, like, Joe and Rated probably going to stick together again. Rated will still be a player. Joe will be his head coach. So that's my theory right now. We'll have to see how things develop, but I thought I would uh, share that with you guys. Jacob Wolf says the following on ESPN. Kronka Sports and Entertainment have parted ways with Sentinels and will build their own front office to run the LA Gladiators and one of the two future Los Angeles Call of Duty teams. Rumored to be the Los Angeles Gorillas that we talked about yesterday and uh, the other Los Angeles team owned by Immortals is rumored to be called the Los Angeles Optic or something related to that. So those are the rumors right now. And, uh, you know, this does imply, obviously, the Kronker are investing. And we already know that for a time. But just to bring this to your guys' attention, because I thought it was pretty interesting. So a couple more things before we finish the video. Let's do some Roster Mania rumor updates. Chicago roster looking set, along with Atlanta and New York City. So the Chicago roster, rumored to be Scump, Formal, Gunless, Arsatis, and Envoy. That's rumored to be the squad. Atlanta has a squad, supposedly, of Simp, Abizi, Major Maniac, Priester, and Celium is meant to be the team. And New York City has this team from the other day. Accuracy, Attach, Zuma, Zero, and Temp is the is the rumor right now. And I just talked about Zero potentially wanting to stay in the States. Um, you know, well, here you go. So anyway, still trying to confirm Jcap to Los Angeles. He was rumored to be on the um, on the other Los Angeles team now. Florida plus two, Minnesota plus two, and Comma and Apathy to Seattle. So, you know, the Minnesota rumors having been uh, so silly, Assault and God Rx and Seattle slacked Octane and Enable, supposedly Karma and Apathy unsure on their locations for now. Shotzi to Dallas 50-50, can't find a solid answer. Toronto, of course, because he won the World Championship in Halo on Spy, so they might be keeping him. Unsure on London, um, I still think Scraps and Dylan's, this came out yesterday. Now, you know, we have Wiskin and Al's, is Scraps fully baiting? Are they both fully baiting? And uh, Scraps is on the team, would love to see it personally, but I'm not quite sure. Starting to hear Toronto lineup, I'll wait until I hear more though. So to finish things off, thought this was quite interesting. The most mentioned players from COD Champ. So starting here, most mentioned teams, Optic, 100 Thieves, E United, Heretics, and FaZe Clan. And then the most mentioned players being Scump, Dashy, Simp, Clayster, and Karma. So thought that was quite interesting. And of course, Simp's SD had the timeline on fire. And of course, Scump going off as well in, um, you know, what would possibly prove to be the last world championship. For those of you who have heard about the last, you know, COD Champs, the reason for that really is because in the Overwatch League, the which is probably what the CDL is going to be based upon, they don't really have like a world championship where you have all the pro teams and all the best amateur teams face off against each other and you can be knocked out early on if you're a pro team and all the stuff that we've had with COD Champs for years. It's really much more like, um, like a playoffs really. You don't have, it's basically just you have playoffs at the end of the season and there's no like champs where you include the amateurs as well. And I think maybe there'd be some issues with that considering that it's possible that organizations that own a spot in the main professional league could also own a spot in the um, in the amateur side and you won't get these same amateur organizations in the in the contenders as it's called in overwatch which is like the path to pro thing than uh, than you will do in the in the cdl in in past times or in cwl in past times so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you did subscribe if you're new as always i'd greatly appreciate it. leave your thoughts down below very interesting stuff going forwards thank you for watching as always i'll see you next time